The short answer is nicotine works stronger on dopamine, so it will likely work better for focus. But in this video, we're gonna dive a bit deeper and go over both how nicotine and caffeine work. What are the risks and benefits? what are the safest ways to take both, and a bonus at the end of how to keep stimulants effective for longer. So how do nicotine and caffeine both work? We'll start with nicotine. Nicotine is a nicotinic cholinergic receptor agonist. It causes an increase in dopamine and a decrease in GABA. Dopamine is a rewarding neurotransmitter for us and helps us focus on one task. GABA, on the other hand, is an inhibitory neurotransmitter, meaning it makes us sleepy and relaxed. So nicotine both pushes on the gas with increasing dopamine and it takes away the breaks by decreasing GABA. Caffeine works differently. It blocks adenosine receptors in the brain. Adenosine is produced by our body throughout the day while we're awake. The longer we're awake, the more adenosine piles up. Adenosine is an inhibitory neurotransmitter, meaning it makes us feel sleepy. Caffeine produces benefits for attention, focus, and wakefulness because it blocks these adenosine receptors. So adenosine won't be able to attach to these receptors in the brain and make us feel sleepy. It'll just keep floating around until the adenosine wears off. So it doesn't completely get rid of the sleepiness, it just kind of postpones it for later. Well, what are the benefits of nicotine and caffeine on focus? A 2021 literature review of nicotine and cognition noted the neurobiology underlying effort demanding cognitive of functioning has been linked to the cholinergic system, which means the cholinergic system is needed whenever we're doing difficult mental tasks like learning or working. They further noted, stimulating the cholinergic system with nicotine improved working memory in non-smoking younger adults, which is going to be most of you watching. I certainly don't recommend smoking at all. It's terrible for your lungs. Okay, so what are the long-term side effects of nicotine and caffeine use? Well, starting with nicotine, the same 2021 review noted, many of these studies have demonstrated positive effects of nicotine for cognition with acute dosing and safety and efficacy have been seen in studies with chronic nicotine treatment. And they also wrote, nicotine treatment improved attention in older adults with mild cognitive impairment, age-associated memory impairment, and Alzheimer's disease. Therefore, we can likely conclude that nicotine is safe for long-term use, and it can even be neuroprotective against different forms of dementia. However, nicotine does have the potential for addiction because it increases dopamine in the brain, just like other stimulants like Adderall and Ritalin. Things that would increase the potential for nicotine addiction would be everyday use, higher doses, and faster delivery system into the blood. Therefore, to decrease the potential for addiction, you want to use the lowest dose possible that shows cognitive benefit. Ideally, not use it every day, which we'll go over more later on in the video, and use a slow delivery mechanism. A reasonably slow delivery mechanism would be nicotine gum at 0.5 to 1 milligram. Caffeine does appear safe for long-term use. It has a lower potential for addiction because it does not have a direct mechanism that increases dopamine in the brain. Of course, if you have a heart problem, be sure to check with your cardiologist before starting any stimulants. What are the safest ways to take nicotine and caffeine? Good question. The short answer is with nicotine, either gum or patches, and with caffeine, usually in a drink form or a pill is fine. But why are nicotine patches and gum safer than other roots? Well, inhaling nicotine through smoking or vaping gets the nicotine into your blood 15 times faster than it does chewing nicotine gum. Nicotine patches take even more time to reach peak blood levels. So smoking nicotine is not only terrible for you, regardless of whether it's smoked or vape, because it can cause long-term lung damage, but it also significantly increases the risk of addiction through its super fast delivery mechanism into the blood and its potential for really high doses. What's more, preservatives in cigarettes, like acetaldehyde, among others, increase the addictiveness associated with cigarette smoking. Now, we were also talking earlier about taking low doses to prevent the potential for addiction. A vape pen, like a Juul, usually has anywhere from 20 milligrams to 40 milligrams of nicotine in them. Common brands of cigarettes usually have about 24 milligrams of nicotine in a pack of 20 cigarettes. So that'll help put into perspective the different dosages there are when we're talking about using nicotine for slight cognitive benefit. But 
Doesn't nicotine gum cause mouth cancer? In short, no. It doesn't. What you're thinking about is chewing tobacco. There was one study in 2009 that looked at a specific gene called the FOXM1, and they noted that nicotine increased the activation of this gene and therefore sped up the growth of mouth cancers when they looked at these cells in a Petri dish. However, this doesn't really mean much. The UK Cancer Research evaluated this study and they noted that there are around 70 cancer-causing substances known as carcinogens in tobacco products, but most scientists feel that nicotine isn't one of them. And the researchers in the study themselves said, we've shown the FOXM1 gene is activated by nicotine in human mouth cells, which raises the possibility that nicotine could potentially increase the risk of mouth cancer. We want to stress, however, that further research is needed to conclusively determine whether this is indeed the case. Let's talk about the concept of rotating stimulant use. As everyone has probably experienced, if you drink caffeine every single day, your body will become habituated to the drug and you will require higher and higher doses to achieve the same effect. One strategy that can be used if you are someone who uses both nicotine and caffeine would be to rotate these two stimulants. That would mean using nicotine maybe Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and then using caffeine Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. This might help prevent the body habituating to these drugs so they can continue to work effectively for cognitive enhancement long term. Remember, the goal with stimulants is to get a slight cognitive benefit from them by using the lowest doses possible. If you can get away with taking less and still getting benefit, take less. This is especially true with a drug like nicotine. It's a very strong drug. Different stimulants can be tremendously helpful for improving attention and focus, but the number one memory aid isn't stimulants. It's actually optimizing your sleep. And that's why you should check out this video next to learn the hands down five best strategies to not only get your best night's sleep ever, but also to continue sleeping well every single night.